Welcome to Chris Cook for you too. Today I'm going to be doing chicken and crab zeti bake. Now I know that this recipe is going to require a lot more ingredients, but I think that if you watch the tutorial, it'll be very, very easy for you to put together this delicious recipe. So let's get started with the ingredients that you're going to need in order to make this dish. You're going to need mozzarella and Parmesan shredded cheese, olive oil, chicken broth. You're going to need crab. Now I'm using the crab claw meat, but if you choose not to use the crab portion of this and just go with chicken, you can do that as well. But I'm just doing this. This is my Sunday treat. We're going to need chicken breast, minced garlic, salt, pepper, flour, parsley, and you can do without the parsley if you choose to, but the parsley really goes on, on the top to make it prettier, and I should have fresh parsley, but I didn't have any, so we're going with dried parsley, half and half, and of course you're going to need the zetti. Now, as always, you know that I make a lot of I cook a lot for a lot of people, so what I'm going to do is to put your recipe at the bottom. I've had people that will write and say, well, you know, the ingredients that you put in and then the ingredients that you listed was different. Anybody that has been following me for any length of time, you know that I cook for more than just two to four people. So I'm going to always put your recipe at the bottom and just go for the big recipe that I'm going to be using simply so you can have the tutorial of seeing exactly how it's done. So I'm going to go away, get the chicken ready, get my pasta ready, and I'll meet you at the stove. Okay, right. now I'm at the stove and I've already washed my chicken, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in the skillet because I have to fry up uh, these pieces of chicken. And you're not going to hard fry this chicken. You're just going to uh, just make certain that it's fried. Soft fried because you're going to have to shred it. Try to see if I can get every bit of it in here. Now I'll turn this up just a little bit. And I'll go away and just fry up this chicken. What I want to show you with this chicken is I'm going to go ahead and I just had my glove on so I um, so I wouldn't have to touch down in it. Now I'm going to go ahead and just season up this chicken with some salt and pepper. Remember I'm going to shred this so I'm not going to let this be cooked very hard. It's just going to be cooked um, just like a soft, it's going to be like a soft cook. You don't want to brown on it. You don't want to brown it at all. All you want to do is to just make certain that it's done on the inside. So I have, and the only thing that I'm doing is I'm putting salt and pepper uh, generously on both sides. I'm going to do this on this side, and once it has cooked, turn my stove up just a little bit. Once it has cooked on this side, then I'll flip it, and I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now, if you check out this pot on the other side, my water is boiling and what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and put in your zeti pasta remember you are not cooking as much as i'm cooking so you will not use as much pasta as i'm using not unless you're going to cook for say uh 12 to 14 people which is exactly what i'm going to do okay so you're going to give it just a little lightweight stir you don't have to put any oil in it but you do have to put some salt in it. So I'm going to put about a tablespoon of salt over into my two boxes of pasta. I'm going to give it a stir and I'm going to allow this to cook according to the package instructions. Now the package instruction says six quarts of water per pasta. Put in some um, salt and allow this to cook for 10 minutes. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. The only thing is I may have used a little bit less water, but I'm not really worried about that because you just go ahead and cook it according to the package instructions. Now on this side, I'm going to allow this chicken to cook 
and then once it cooks on this side and I'm going to try to flip one because I can see where it's turning white at and it looks like this is the easier piece right here so now you see how that chicken is that's I'm just going to cook it through I'm not going to brown it I'm just going to cook it through so I'm, I don't have any problems with this light uh, chicken color on it that's fine I just want to cook it so that it is done on the inside. Now, keep in mind it's going to get some more baking time when I put it into the oven. When I mix everything together and put it in the oven. But I just want it to have, to be, to have cooked because you're not going to cook it that long in the oven. So I want to make certain that it is cooked. Now, when it comes to your um, Zeti pasta on the other side, you don't want to cook it any longer than 10 minutes. And you do want to stir because you don't want, because you're not using oil, there is a possibility that your uh, Zeti pasta may stick together. Now, you don't have to use Zeti pasta. You can use any kind of pasta that you want to cook. I'm using Zeti pasta. But you can use anything from Farley. You can use anything that you want to use. You can go ahead and just uh, use that. And if you want to switch it over to, say, um a fettuccine or something uh, some pastas of that nature you can go ahead and do that as well so I'm gonna allow that to cook for 10 minutes I'm gonna go ahead and once I flip my chicken over then I'm gonna go ahead and season the other side and when I get that all done then I'll be right back and show you what it actually looks like but see that that's about as brown as you want to go you don't want to go any darker than that so I'll be right back Okay, now my chicken is done, and I did salt and pepper it on both sides, but I just want to show you that this chicken is actually done, okay? Now, this is a wooden, as you can see, this is a wooden uh, spoon that I'm, I'm using, or a wooden utensil that I'm using, but see, you can break that chicken all the way through, and there is no um, pink parts still showing through that chicken, even though you don't have it brown. I've taken out all of the pink parts that you would possibly see, you know, in the chicken. There you go. And I'm able to break it, and that chicken is cooked on the inside. That's as done as you want to it, want it to be. So I'll go ahead and I'll cut off um, my stove. Okay, and I'm going to shred this. Now, if you cook it to this point and you don't take it any further, it's going to be a lot easier for you to shred that chicken. Now, remember, we did not use any, um, we didn't use any flour or anything else on the chicken, so it's a lot easier to cook because it does not have to pass through the cooking of the breading part when you put on the flour, that extra cooking. Okay, so all of this chicken appears to be done, and it's okay to, because we're going to shred it, it's okay to pull it up if you're totally not sure that your chicken is actually done but I'm sure that there's not any problems with mine so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, go ahead and just shred it you know a uh, loose and like if there is if I still want one piece to get just a little bit you know more cooked and I would say that would be this piece right here just leave it cooking down in there for a couple more minutes and move everything else off to the side okay that's the end of the cooking process for that if you look over at my pasta my pasta is done and I'm getting ready to take that and drain it now you don't want to all you want to do is to put it in the strainer and drain off this water that you have on there the excess water you don't want to rinse it you don't want to do any of that just drain this water off because it's already ready see and there's no problems with that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll bring you back when I get ready to make the sauce. And that will be next coming up. Be right back. Okay, now I'm getting ready to make the sauce. In here I have roughly uh, about two and a half tablespoons of uh, olive oil. So to that I'm going to go ahead and add my garlic. And you have to be careful with garlic because garlic will burn real fast. Okay, so once I add my garlic, then I'm going to go ahead and I've allowed it to just cook for a minute. Well, really about 15 seconds. Then I'm going to go ahead and add my flour. 
and what I'm really doing now is to like making the thickening for the um, for the sauce that I'm going to pour over. So in that, I'm going to add two and a half cups of chicken broth. Now remember, I'm going to put your recipe at the bottom, so you won't be adding as much as I'm adding right now. Okay, so that's two and a half, it's two and a half cups of chicken broth, and I'm gonna change what I'm stirring this with, and I'm gonna stir it with um, with my whisk. Okay, now. Now what I'm doing now is just to dissolve my flour into my chicken broth mixture. But you don't want those lumps. And if you can look over here in the other pan my zeti pasta is in the pan getting ready for me to mix up everything okay now once i've added that i'm going to go ahead and add my two and a half cups of half and half i had a little bit left from another carton so i'm using that That's one. That's two and a half. And yes, you can use regular milk if that's what you choose to do. You can use um, you can use one percent or two percent milk. Whatever it is that you want to use, you can use for this sauce. Now what this is going to do in a minute, this is going to thicken. And that's what we want it to do. We want it to thicken. So it's going to take a minute. So I'm going to sit here and stir until this starts to thicken. And what I'll do is I'll bring it back as this starts to thicken up. That's just my oven going off to tell me that it's ready and I'm glad it did that because you want to preheat your oven to 375 degrees. So once you get your oven preheated to 375, that's what you would need, the temperature you would need in order to put this together once it's mixed. So I'm going to go ahead, mix this for a little while and I'll bring you back when I get ready to add the crab meat. I'll be right back. Okay, my sauce is starting to thicken up, so I want to go ahead and add my crab meat to that now. Get me something to get it out of here with. There you go. Okay, and let me show you. I don't want to get every piece of that out. So that's the goodness of it. Okay, and as you can see, when it hits the wall of the pan, that is starting to thicken. Now, the way this crab meat comes is it comes with this top on it like this. Then you have to rip off this top, and you take that off in order, because it's dead as a sealant, and to keep it fresh. And then you're going to take your crab claw meat, and you're just going to put it down over in it. Now, there is no juices, so you don't have to worry about that. Now see that sauce is thickening. Okay, it's at this stage that I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. Okay, and the crab meat, that takes about 2-3 minutes to, to cook up. So that's no big deal. It can cook up in the hot sauce. So while I'm waiting on that to go ahead and just cook up that 2-3 minutes, that gives me the 2-3 or three minutes to go over here and get my chicken shredded. Okay, so now I have... See how it's thickening up? 
and you wanted to do the rest of the thickening over in the uh, over in the baking dish. So I'm going to allow this to just sit here and continue to simmer. I'm going to go ahead and shred my chicken and I'll bring it right back when I get ready to put that chicken in. But before I go away, let me just go ahead and add the salt and the pepper. And I wanted to tell you something. Uh, you've seen some specks in the first part of when I was making the sauce. Those were little pieces of garlic. <laughs> so let me just get that out there. That was just little pieces of garlic. So, and it was where the garlic had browned. So, I wanted to just tell you that. Okay, that looks good. That sauce looks good with the crab meat in it. So, I'm going to go ahead and shred up this chicken and I'll be right back so we can put together this dish. I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm back and I'm getting ready to add everything to my Zeti pasta. You see a little bit of oil on the pasta. When you don't want your pasta to stick together, then you just go ahead and put some oil on it. And that will prevent it from just sticking together. And you not being able to use it at all because I made my pasta a little bit early. So I'm going to go ahead and put in... This is a 6 ounce package of Parmesan cheese. And this is a 16 ounce package of mozzarella so I put in all of the parmesan and I put in half of the mozzarella Okay, and I just wanted to just get that a little toss now I did not you didn't I don't shred my chicken all the way down because you want them to get chunks of chicken okay so, as you can see, you see how I took it down. Okay? I left you a bite. So, it's kind of like bite-sized pieces. And then some of it is just shredded so it can go through the cream sauce. So, that means that you'll get, when you pick up your pasta, you will have shreds of chicken on it as well as shreds of crab meat on it. So, just going to mix that in. Now, once I've mixed that in, I'm going to go ahead and add my cream sauce. See it? I want you to see it. See, it's creamy. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my cream sauce to my pasta. really looks good and it smells delicious okay and taste it to make certain that you have enough salt in your dish okay now I'm gonna stir that I'm going to serve this up with some French toast. And a garden salad. Now I'm going to cook this for roughly 20 minutes in my oven because everything is done. So the only thing that you're doing at this point is you're just making certain that your top, your cheese is done. Whoa! Didn't mean to do that. Get that off of my stove. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the topping on it. And the topping is just a mixture of, I want to get that up off my stove, stickler for that. It's a mixture of mozzarella cheese to 
give me that pull that I'm looking for. And I always talk about that. And then I'm going to add, I had some leftover Parmesan. So I'm going to add that leftover Parmesan and then I'm going to go ahead and add my other package of Parmesan. Now I'm making a lot. You're not going to make that much. So this is full of crab meat and chicken, pasta. There you go. Now I'm going to take this, put this in my oven 375 degrees for roughly 20 to 25 minutes. There you go. And I'll bring it back once that gets ready. Be okay, ready. so I'm going to take it out. Man, it smells delicious. There it is. I'm going to give it about five minutes before I cut it. And then I'm going to dish you up a plate. Be right back. Okay, now we're back and I'm going to go ahead and dish it up. It's been about five minutes. And the little green sprinkles that you see on top is the parsley that I told you about. But it's better and it looks more attractive if you add the green parsley from the fresh parsley. Because that's more greener than this actually is. But if you don't want to add it, then you don't have to add it at all. So what I'm going to do is to go ahead and dish up a plate. Oh my goodness, look at how cheesy that is. Man, I mean, it is really cheesy. <laughs> Look at that cheese. Okay. There it is. And you can see the chicken. Sorry about having to use my hands. But you can see the chicken. See the little pieces of chicken in it? So I'm going to take this over to my table and I want you to meet me there because I want to show you what I'm having uh, with this. And as you can see, look down in before I get ready to leave. Okay. It's just the right. It's not, um, it's not real. Uh, I don't want to say, I don't want to use the word mushy, but the sauce is not runny all over every place, which is exactly like it should be. Okay. And this is... What I'm having for dinner, I think you're really going to enjoy it if you try it. So meet me at the table. Okay, now I'm at my table and this is what my dinner is. It's going to be the chicken and crab zetti, baked zetti, along with a garden salad. I'm having uh, French toast and I'm having a beverage of my choice. So I just wanted to show you what I was having for dinner. And I hope that you'll try this because I think you're really going to love it. This is still piping hot. And you can see, just look at how that cheese is just pulling away. I know that this is going to be a fantastic deal and this meal. And as always, thank you for watching Chris Cook for YouTube. Bye.